Hello friends, hope you're all doing well. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a local development environment with uh, VAMP server and uh, WordPress and some other tools that you might need. Um, setting it up is uh, quite simple and shouldn't take you too long depending on your internet connection and your uh, hardware obviously. Um, there are a lot of tools to choose from and they all come with uh, different pros and cons. I'm going to show you what tools I'm using and uh, there's absolutely no need for you to use any of these tools if you're more comfortable with other tools of course. So the first thing we're going to install is a text editor named VS Code. There are several others out there such as Atom, Sublime, Notepad++, but VS Code has gained a lot of popularity in recent years. So to download it and install it, simply go to uh, code visualstudio.com or just uh, you know do a little a good old uh, Google search uh, so VS code got it right there all right so code visualstudio.com so we're gonna download this one here uh, let's follow the link and um, the version we're gonna use uh, so come here to the uh, home page so the version we're gonna use here if you scroll down is uh, for Windows. I'm on Windows 10 and uh, the 64 bit user installer 64 bit. So, if you uh, want to know what kind of version you're using, it's easy to check uh, on Windows. So, just uh, go to uh, uh, this PC and right click, choose uh, properties, and uh, down here under system and system type. You can see here 64-bit operating system, uh, right? So you need a 64-bit. And as you can see, I'm not running a uh, super fast computer, and uh, you don't really need uh, the latest when it comes to uh, hardware in order to set this up. Um, I've been using this for a couple of years. Uh, I probably need to upgrade this. It's a little bit slow, but uh, you ab absolutely don't need the latest and the greatest in order to. Uh, set up your own environment system here. All right, so after checking, let's uh, go back to uh, uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, click here on the user installer 64-bit. And uh, then uh, just wait for the download prompt. All right, so you get three options here, run, save, and cancel. So uh, for this video, I'm just gonna click on run then uh, just uh, wait for the program to uh, download here. Uh, so this might take a while depending on your computer and your internet connection. So I will pause the video here and come back once it's uh, uh, ready to go. Alright, so let's first accept the agreement and then click next and then uh, choose where to uh, install the uh, studio code. I'm just gonna go with the default here and click next. Then um, if you want to create a uh, shortcut in the start menu folder, I'm just gonna click next here as well. And then uh, select any additional tasks. So I'm gonna create a desktop icon. I'm gonna leave the rest here blank. Uh, make sure you have this one add to path. Alright, uh, then click next. And then uh, if everything looks fine, then click on install. Then just wait for uh, for the uh, program to install itself. We are going to uh, install some uh, extensions for VS Code. Now VS Code already comes loaded with Emmet, which is a great extension. It yeah vastly improves your uh, um, your workflow, and uh, we're gonna install an additional six extensions. There are a lot more extensions that are useful, but I think these six uh, extensions are going to be the most helpful for you in the beginning. Then the more you use Visual Studio Code, the more you're going to realize which what kind of um, extensions you want to use. All right, so uh, I'm just going to wait for this one to uh, install itself. And then uh, we're going to uh, have a closer look Visual Studio Code. Now, as I said before, 
you don't have to use uh, Studio Code. There are a lot of other uh, text editors, but uh, I really like this one. Um, it's simple to use and gives you a lot of options, and uh, the extensions are great, and there are a lot to to choose from. Right. So right now, let's um, let's just uh, finish the uh, the setup. So let's just click finish and uh, launch Visual Studio Code uh, at the same time here. Then we should be uh, good to go. So when uh, you open up uh, Visual Studio Code for uh, for the first time. It's, uh, it's going to just be a blank, uh, blank window, pretty much. And um, what we gonna do here is uh, that we are we're going to add some uh, extensions. So um, first off, I uh, just want to show you uh, what kind of extensions there are. Um, let's see, I do have a lot of things open here. So um, First extension uh, we're gonna add are uh, <clears throat> something called VS Code icons, and um, this will make it a lot more readable uh, your your files. So let's uh, type it in here um, VS Code uh, icons. So it's uh, this one here VS Code icons team all right now i have already installed it in uh, previous installation but what you need to do is just click on it uh, on the left side here and then uh, there should be a button here called uh, install all right so you just click on that one and then you install so what happens uh, with that one is that um, on the left side here you will have all your files that you work with uh, so for example uh, like this here um, so if you go to this one here, uh, you have, uh, for example, this practice folder. As you can see here, you have an icon here. Uh, so this is a CSS file. So this is a CSS icon, and this is a HTML icon. All right, so uh, depending on what kind of file you're working with, uh, you have an icon here that shows you what kind of file you're about to open. So that uh, makes your file system much more uh, readable. Now, the next one here we're going to uh, add is something called Atom Keymap. Uh, this one is actually from a pre another, um, uh, it's from, uh, another text editor that I mentioned before uh, called Atom. Um, so the short keys for uh, the text editor is great. And um, fortunately, they installed, you can install this, all those uh, shortcuts here for um, VS Code. So just uh, search for um, Atom key map. Uh, you should put in the right uh, file here. So uh, Atom key map, right? So it's this one here, Atom key map. And uh, again, I already installed it from previous installation here. Uh, so again, click on it and click install. You also have a, uh, a button here as well. You can click. Uh, so it will install right away. All right. So uh, what happens here is you are going to get to use a lot of these short codes. So if you scroll down here, you have all, a list here of the short codes that you could use. Now, the ones that are uh, really useful is uh, this one here um, for, uh, for Windows, Control Shift. Plus D, it will copy a line uh, below it, and here also we move a line up. Control up. So I'll, I'll show you show you what that what that means. So we open up this practice file here, and uh, let's just uh, start with this one. Welcome page. HTML. And uh, one thing, actually, we can just open up maybe a new file here. So I'm going to open. Uh, uh, this by uh, right click and new file. I'm just gonna name it test.html. 
And as soon as, as you uh, add, add, uh, add the ending HTML, you get a file there, right? So if you look at this one, dot CSS, see, you got the CSS um, icon. And if you do uh, PHP, you get the PHP icon. Now we're going to use the HTML ending. So HTML, press enter, and it will open up automatically. So I will show you what Emmet does. So this is short code for uh, um, this code. So just uh, uh, get an exclamation mark, All right? And then uh, press tab. So you can see Emmet abbreviation. So if you have HTML file and uh, and put in an uh, exclamation mark and uh, hit tab, you will get the header for uh, just a normal HTML file. So no need to uh, type this uh, manually. So this all improves your uh, workflow. The same thing with uh, classes. If you need a class, for example, uh, yes, oops, let's go down to the right place here. All right, so let's go down here to uh, body tags and uh, yeah, let's uh, have a class name class and hit tab automatically it will create a div with a class of class right and same thing with uh, if you want to uh, create a uh, an id same thing there id let's name it uh, id actually and then the tab and you can do the all kinds of elements. So if you want an H2 tag, just H2 tab. And if you want a, a, a paragraph, P tab. And if you want a link, A and tab, you get automatically linked there. Now, what um, this one, um, the last one, Adam Keymap will do is if you uh, want to copy this, so hitting Control C. And uh, going on to the next line, what you can do is uh, Control Shift D, and it's just copy it automatically and hit and go down uh, one row. So it's uh, super useful, and um, yeah, just uh, memorize a few of these uh, uh, shortcuts, and that will vastly improve your uh, your workflow. Now um, the next um, extension we will install is something called Auto Rename Tag. So I'll uh, show you that one. So let's just uh, search for this one. Auto rename tag. All right, this is the first one by uh, Jun Han. And again, installed already. Um, so what this will do is that uh, if you want to change the name of a uh, class, or if you want to change the whole um, whole element, uh, you don't have to change it in two places. Uh, so normally you have to change, uh, if you want to change the paragraph tag to an uh, H3 tag. All right, so you only need to change uh, at the beginning, the beginning tag, the opening tag, and it will change automatically the ending tag here as well, right? Same if you want to change um, H2, let's do an H1, right, so you can see it will change the whole tag, so you don't have to come down here as well and change. So that's uh, super useful. We'll save you time uh, in the long run. All right. So uh, the next one we are gonna install is uh, if you work a lot with WordPress or PHP files in general, um, then it could be really helpful to colorize uh, your brackets and uh, your functions. So uh, we are going to uh, oops, install. A uh, extension called bracket pair colorizer. So let's look for that one. So bracket uh, bracket pair colorizer, right? It's the first one here, right? By uh, Cohenrad S. All right. So uh, it was it will just make your code much more readable, right? So you can see here um, all of your all your brackets. Have a color, so it, it's uh, it's easily identifiable, um, so it's super useful. So bracket pair colorizer. Um, the next one we're gonna install is something called a uh, the live server, and uh, this extension will um, 
uh, if you work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it will basically create uh, a, uh, a local server on your machine, and then it will update your files uh, as soon as you hit save. So you don't need to go in and uh, update or refresh uh, your page in order to see any changes that you make. It will update that automatically. So uh, I will show you what this does here, right? So let's go in here and search for live server. And it's by Ritwick Day. I hope I got that one right. Um, right, so just uh, search for live server and install. And uh, what this one will do is you will, uh, uh, when you install it, you will get a, uh, an icon down here called Go Live. So in your HTML file, uh, so if I just uh, press uh, write something here, hello, then bye. Now if I hit save and then go live, click down here or right click in your file and open with live server. And what it will do is it will open up a, uh, a page here in your browser and um, then you can uh, in real time track your your changes all right so as soon as it starts up here we will see uh, your website or the file you're working on what it looks like All right, so you got hello, bye. What we'll do now is instead of every time you change your file here and hit save and then have to refresh, uh, what this will do is it will change it automatically as soon as you hit save, right? So I changed here to goodbye. It's not reflected yet, but if I hit save, it will update. Here automatically, right? So you can see here, goodbye. Super useful and uh, save you plenty of time. Unfortunately, it only works with uh, HTML and um, CSS and JavaScript, and, um, and not for PHP files. So that's uh, a little bit unfortunate, there, right? Now um, there are many other extensions that you could um, um, install, but I think these. Uh, extensions are going to be the most useful for you in the beginning and then as i said the more you use this code the more you code yourself then you will find out what kind of extensions that you need all right so that's the uh, code editor vs code so now what we will do is uh, we will install a different browser now i currently using uh, microsoft um, edge uh, this browser has improved uh, since its uh, first iteration, uh, but it's not the uh, the best browser to use for web development. Uh, most people use Chrome, and Chrome is a great browser as well. But I've been using Firefox uh, lately, so I will install Firefox. So there's two different versions of Firefox: uh, one normal standard version uh, version, and then uh, there's one. Uh, for developers, so we're gonna install the one for developers. So uh, let's uh, go on and uh, let's search for uh, uh, Firefox. Uh, let's see, Mozilla Firefox. And uh, let's see here. All right, that's a little weird. Uh, which that right? Okay, so let's search again. Firefox. All right, so let's uh, go here. Download Firefox. All right, so uh, <clears throat> uh, actually, what we need to do is we should actually go to firefox.org 
All right, so here we got a few options uh, for developers. So choose that one, uh, developers, and uh, you use uh, this one here, Firefox Developer Edition. So Firefox built just for developers. Uh, so click the link there. And um, then uh, click on a button that says Firefox Developer Edition right here. And then uh, should come up prompt here and what you need to do here is just click on uh, on save all right you can choose around there um, yes i'm going to click on uh, on save in this case and then just wait for it to uh, to download then uh, it's going to go run as i said you can use uh, chrome as well um, but I'm, uh, I've, I've been really I've really been enjoying using Firefox uh, lately so that's what I'm gonna gonna use in this uh, in this video all right so uh, um, no more action is actually needed here uh, so we just wait for this one to to run uh, the installation and we'll uh, start up automatically there's a lot of things you can do you could you know you could uh, um, customize your experience and uh, you can also s uh, sign up for an account but we're not going to do any of that we're just going to leave it as, as it is um, so here we go so all right let's get your new copy yeah i have already installed it so uh, let's just reinstall uh, if you haven't installed it before uh, that will not show for you um so now that, that when it's installing um you will have the same pop-up as i have here all right so now we have firefox up and running and uh, we don't really need to do anything else here as i said uh, you could uh, sign up for a firefox account and um, go into the settings and uh, customize your own experience but we're gonna leave all that for now and um, just uh, move on here so the next thing we need to do is uh, to uh, download and install vamp server so vamp server is uh, a local uh, server that you can set up on your uh, computer and uh, with this one you can uh, add databases my uh, sql and uh, you can run php files uh, it's great for WordPress uh, and uh, development and uh, Laravel and um, basically anything that requires a, a database. All right, so uh, let's uh, try to find web server. So uh, just click here. First uh, option here, webserver.com, and that should take us to uh, the home page. And uh, once here, scroll down. And uh, here you'll find um, two different versions. And as I told you before, uh, how to find your version, uh, your Windows version. I have 64 bits, so I'm just going to click on this one. And uh, this pop up should show up with a bunch of warnings. Uh, you can ignore these for the most part. Uh, the only thing you might run into is this one here. Uh, if you're missing this one, Visual Studio 2012 uh, VC11. Uh, you need to download that one, but uh, you notice once you uh, start to run uh, VAMP server. All right, but uh, I'm going to click on this one, download uh, directly. And uh, the download should start uh, automatically here. And uh, it will take you to uh, 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 SourceForge, where you can uh, download it from. So I will pause the video while it's while it downloads well first here uh, just click uh, either run or save i'm going to click on on run here and then uh, just wait for it to to download i'll be back once it's uh, downloaded all right okay so uh, first option here is uh, choose your language so i'm going to choose english and then uh, just accept the agreement here click next and then uh, some uh, information here before installing. Uh, there's a 
told you, as I talked about earlier, you need uh, the uh, these packages here. Uh, but if you uh, already have those, no worries. Then uh, click next, and then uh, choose where to install it. I'm just gonna install it here right on the C drive. Click next, then uh, create a uh, shortcut. Click next, and if you're happy with your choices, then click on install, and then uh, it will install here. It might take some time, so I will come back once it's uh, installed. All right, so uh, next step here is choose a uh, default browser. So by default, the Internet Explorer is going to be used by a VAMP server. Um, you don't have to change this, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I'm just going to change it to uh, Firefox, which we just installed. So click uh, yes here, because we want to change uh, the browser. And uh, then let's find the uh, Mozilla developer. Uh, so let's see, I think I've got it here local disk and program files. And uh, let's see, Firefox developer edition. And then let's click there, Firefox.exe. All right, then uh, I want to change the, the editor. Um, don't really need to do that. It doesn't really matter, so it's going to click no here. To speed it up a little bit, then uh, just uh, finalize the uh, installation here. All right, so uh, the installation is done. And uh, before we finish off here, uh, some information about how it works. Um, so you can uh, set up your own PHP my admin, which we will do. And uh, take a note here that the username for PHP my admin is root without the quotes, and uh, there's no password. So you can set up your own uh, user and your own password, and uh, that's what we're gonna do next. Uh, but before that, just click uh, next here, and then uh, finish. Then uh, it's all done. Now the next part is to uh, set up uh, the PHP uh, my admin. So let's uh, open up BAMP server. All right. Um. So. All right. So down here you can see the process. So now three services are running. So it's uh, booting up. As soon as this one turns green, we know we're good to go. If it doesn't turn green, then uh, there's an issue. All right, so this icon has turned green. That means uh, we're good to go. So if you click here, you can see what options you have here, uh, what versions you're running. So um, the PHP my admin 4.8.5, and uh, you got the PHP 7.2, and uh, MySQL. 5.7. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up uh, PHP my admin. So uh, you can either start up uh, by clicking here, or you can uh, go there directly. And uh, now this is a local host. So it has to start with uh, local host. Local host. Uh, yes, local host. Backslash PHP my admin. All right, so um, as you can see, the username is root. And remember, there's no password here. So when you first log in, use these credentials. We can, we're going to change this in uh, in the database here. So let's just click on Go. And then uh, we have to choose, or well, we have to add another user. And uh, then you can use whatever credentials that you want. So what we need to do here is uh, just, uh, just choose add new uh, account, or add, add new user account. So just go to uh, user accounts here, then uh, new add user account, then fill in your uh, username, so I'm just gonna fill in CIY 
underscore guy and then uh, password let's do a simple password and retype it and then uh, you can just uh, leave it all here as it is and then uh, click here down here on go and uh, you should be up and running all right so now you have this here so uh, you have added a new user what you can do to try this is to log out and then uh, try to log in with your own credentials here guy and the password one two it's all right all right now you're down here okay so that's BAM server and uh, uh, PHP my admin the next thing we need to do is to install something called uh, commander which is a great tool it's a great uh, command line uh, you don't need this uh, actually but uh, I've been using it and uh, I think it's pretty uh, pretty awesome to be honest so let's uh, go back to good old Google and uh, search for commander and be uh, be aware of the spelling it's uh, C M D E R commander right there all right so it's this one commander.net just click there and it's pretty straightforward you don't have to do anything really just uh, download the full version all right so it's gonna click here and then uh, just follow the, uh, the installation instructions here so I'm just gonna click on open then wait for it to uh, to download and then uh, as soon as it's been downloaded we need to unzip the file and uh, there's some uh, keyboard shortcuts that's pretty useful um, the one that is uh, extremely uh, useful is uh, this one here control alt u so uh, that means you will go up one directory structure it's it's great it's uh, pretty amazing all right so that's the download now let's um, let's unzip this one um, let's see so let's do draw and extract two uh, I'm just gonna extract this one to my uh, C drive like this and uh, just click OK uh, let's see uh, yes to all because I think I've done it once before um, see if this one works okay so now it's been uh, unpacked and uh, let's go to this uh, C drive it's gonna update and here we go, uh, CMD, that's the uh, commander, right? So let's open up that one and uh, commander.exe. And um, we'll do some uh, setup uh, by itself. So if you get this warning here, just uh, choose uh, unblock and uh, continue. And then it would do uh, some. Uh, uh, set up here we don't need to do anything just uh, wait for it to to finish so after it has uh, set itself up we're uh, good to go so remember the uh, shortcut I was telling you about control alt u make you jump back or jump up one uh, directory straight into the uh, C drive there all right so this is great if you want to use uh, git uh, any kind of version control or any other uh, coding that you need the uh, the console or the command line for. All right, so the last part here we're gonna do is uh, to install uh, WordPress uh, itself. So let's uh, go to back to good old Google and uh, let's search for let's uh, install WordPress. 
All right, so um, right here, WordPress.org. Uh, there's actually two uh, kinds of uh, WordPress pages where you can get uh, WordPress from. So one is uh, WordPress.com, and the other one is uh, WordPress.org. The difference there is that on uh, WordPress.com, you don't have to download anything. Uh, everything is uh, taken care of uh, from hosting and to uh, managing uh, a web server but it will cost you money in the end and uh, if you don't buy a, a certain URL your uh, URL will look a little bit weird it will have wordpress.yourblog.com or yourblog.wordpress.com something like that uh, but, and on wordpress.org it's, it's free to uh, download so um, obviously we're gonna get uh, the free one all right so uh, what we need to do here is uh, is uh, click on this one get wordpress and uh, download it this is the latest uh, latest version uh, you can download uh, older versions if you want but we're just gonna download this one here uh, 5.2.3 uh, at this time just click download wordpress and then uh, just click uh, open then wait it for for it to um, download. So the good thing here with uh, downloading it on your own computer is that you can uh, you can uh, start different uh, WordPress installations uh, depending on your on the client you're working for, and uh, also you have a backup, uh, so you don't have to come back here and download it every time you need a new. Uh, WordPress version. All right, so uh, let's just uh, hold on here for a second. I'm waiting for it to uh, install. Okay, so after downloading uh, the zip file, let's uh, unzip this one. And I uh, just click OK here. And uh, ignore that. All right, so what we need to do is to extract this whole thing and um, we got, we have to move this one into the uh, vamp server folder so let's uh, click on extract and then uh, let's go into the C drive and let's find uh, vamp server so it's vamp64 and we're gonna put it in here in uh, www because that's where the uh, local server is so let's just put it down there and uh, let's uh, just Click OK, and uh, let's wait for it to uh, to unzip. So any uh, project you're working on and uh, you want to use uh, VAMP server has to be put in uh, in the uh, www folder. All right. So once that's done, let's uh, head over here and open it up. And 64 and then uh, let's go here all right so here's the wordpress uh folder right here all right um so you don't have to do anything else here uh, at the moment so what we're gonna do is now obviously uh, what you want to do here is um, if you have multiple projects you have to rename this file to uh, something that you uh, can easily recognize later so for example, if you have a client name, uh, well, a code it yourself guy, you name this uh, folder, for example, to uh, code it yourself guy, so you can remember. All right. Now, what we need to do here is just open up this project and uh, just start uh, the final installation of WordPress. So before we do that, let's open, let's go back here to uh, PHP my admin, and uh, let's create uh, another. Uh, a database for our uh, WordPress installation here. Okay, so let's go back there to databases and uh, yes, no privileges. Uh, let's see, let's create uh, a database. Uh, we can do that. Oh, uh, actually, I had I forgot to add privileges to my uh, to my installation here, All right? So uh, let's see, check privileges. I got no privileges. So what we're going to do again here is to go back into root, 
and uh, let's go and uh, let's change that uh, with the user accounts and this guy right here edit privileges global privileges check all let's do that forgot about that then uh, click on go and then uh, so that's that um, all right so let's uh, log back out and uh, log back in with my user okay and um, see we have a better chance here right okay so now it looks it looks normal here right okay so let's click on new or you can go to the databases here and uh, create a database we just click new here and uh, then uh, let's uh, name it to something we can uh, remember so database name uh, let's just do CIY guy all right something like that and then click create all right so that's all you need to do for now so just remember uh, this name here the database name um, so let's open up um, the project all right so remember it's a local host slash and uh, we had WordPress there, right? So uh, WordPress, I think that's the one. So the first thing you need to do is to choose uh, language. So I'm going to just uh, choose English here and then press continue. All right. And what you need to remember here is your database name, which uh, is uh, this one, C-I-Y-I. And the database username. Um, so that's the username that we uh, um, add up here, right? So uh, let's see. Uh, well, it's the uh, username that I picked before, right? And the password as well. All uh, right, so uh, let's uh, click Let's Go. You don't need to actually do anything but the host and uh, the table prefix. It's, it's a local environment here. So just click on Let's Go. And uh, the database name is CIY guy. Let's check it in here. CIY guy. Then the username for uh, the whole database here, which is if you log out here, you can see it's this one here CIY underscore guy. And let's write that down uh, CIY underscore guy. Another password for this one here. And then the local host because you're running a local host and uh, don't change this here it's uh, the tip prefix uh, all right so let's click on submit and uh, then after the installation here so let's run the installation all right and then some information that you need is i'm just going to write it ciy uh, underscore guy that's the site title and the username is uh, the C I Y guy and let's do it capital G and then the password just gonna for simplicity just keep it simple uh, very weak uh, not great okay and confirm use a weak password yes and then your email if you want and um, search and I'm just gonna discourage search engines from indexing this site and then install WordPress and for oh email address sorry I forgot about that so I'm just gonna do um, c i y g i at gmail dot com and again discourage share and then confirm the use a weak password that should be it. Then install WordPress and uh, just wait for the final set up there. All right, nice. So WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. So now you just go log in with your uh, details here. All right, so uh, username. I'm just going to use the. Uh, why don't I just use the. Uh, why? Guy. Com. 
and the password well, so let's keep it simple there right six digits i hope i got this correct i got like a memory like a uh, goldfish all right so now you're up and running and uh you can visit your site here all right hello world uh well not a good looking site but now you have everything you need in order to uh, start uh, developing your own uh, WordPress theme or, uh, on your local machine. So that's it. I hope you uh, like this video um, and I'll see you in the next.